We are following breaking news as we come on the air this morning. A crane derailment forcing the village of East Palestine to issue an evacuation order. You can grab everybody in your household. Don't worry about everything else going up in flames. A quiet community blindsided by disaster. It really looked like an atom bomb that was going off. I just pray to God that I got her out in time that she won't have long term effects. A tragedy that shocked the nation and then just as quickly faded away. I'm happy to announce that the evacuation order is now lifted. As the news conference was ending, the train started running again, like clockwork. But in East Palestine, Ohio, the story continued. This neighborhood's not safe no more. But people were told it was safe to go home. The data that we have demonstrates that we were below those levels of concern. So there's a conflict of interest. There's absolutely a conflict of interest. It's like the fox guarding the hen house. And what unfolded there is a cautionary tale for every town and city in America. The same substance that caused all the problems on February 3rd could be running through town right now. I feel like now I have a duty to warn other communities because this will happen again. So oh, Main Street. Yes, this is Main Street of town, so. Trent Conaway spent his life in and around East Palestine, Ohio, before becoming mayor in 2019. What was it like growing up here? Uh, it was nice. Um, you know, I, I graduated in uh, 1998 from the high school. It's a nice, quiet community. I mean, it's just, it's home. It's, you know, some people like the big city life, and, you know, that's good. That's for them, but I'm not one of them. East Palestine sits about a mile from the Pennsylvania border, a village of roughly 4,700 surrounded by farms and a few factories. Most of us in this town have been here like generation after generation. We're bulldogs. Shelby Walker says she wants her children to live this small town life she knew as a kid. It was the best. We were always at the park. We literally played in the creek all the time. It's just, you knew everybody. You know, most people in town never really locked their doors when we were growing up. Be kind, make good I choices. Love I love you. Have a great day. East Palestine's just a really nice place to raise a family. Missy Allison moved here with her husband a few years ago. My husband is from East Palestine. It's just really tight knit. It didn't seem like anything could happen because nothing ever happens in East Palestine, but it did. Residents, if you have not evacuated, please leave the area. We are following breaking news as we come on the air this morning. A crane derailment forcing the village of East Palestine to issue an evacuation order. Also advised to the one mile radius evac and unknown hazmat. On February 3rd, 2023, a train carrying hazardous chemicals derailed and burst into flames. If you can grab everybody in your household, don't worry about everything else going up in flames. Just because of toxic fumes and whatnot, okay? I think there's hazmat on the train cars. The rail operator Norfolk Southern told officials that one of several chemicals on board was vinyl chloride, a highly combustible gas used to make plastic and other synthetic materials. Exposure to it has been linked to several kinds of cancer. Norfolk Southern convinced local and state officials to let its crews vent the vinyl chloride and burn it off, which they said was needed to prevent a catastrophic explosion. The railroad has a, a, a serious concern about an explosion with one or more of these cars. The vent and burn released hydrogen chloride and phosgene, a gas used as a weapon in World War I. The smoke was so thick, it appeared on the National Weather Service's satellite. My biggest concern is pollution, that they're gonna you know, have us move back in like nothing happened. Two days after the vent and burn, evacuees were told that the fumes had dissipated. Tests showed the air and drinking water were so far safe, and they could return home. With the full support and backing of Governor DeWine, I'm happy to announce that the evacuation order is now lifted. Mr. Chief. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good job. But then, in the weeks that followed, several residents contacted us to report they were developing symptoms, like rashes, itchy skin, bloody noses, and trouble breathing. Acute bronchitis due to chemical fumes. Did you ever have these problems before the derailment? No, ma'am. Local officials reported more than 40,000 dead fish in the waterways. 
Wow. Look at all that. Look at it. It's all in the bottom of the creek bed. With doubts growing about the safety of the environment and residents erupting in anger, the Environmental Protection Agency took charge and ordered Norfolk Southern to remove any contamination remaining in East Palestine. Get my grandchildren out of here if you care about them. So we're sorry for what happened. Basically, we started pulling our wallpaper off our walls because we don't know if the chemical is seeping into the wallpaper or anything. Six months later, trucks were still digging up soil under the tracks behind Shelby Walker's backyard. You cannot go down back at all. You have to stay right here. Thank you, boy. Thank you. How safe do you feel here? Not at all. This neighborhood's not safe no more. She told us her family was still experiencing symptoms they'd never had before. The fatigue and the memory loss is huge. Their dad coughs so bad. He's now doing, um, has to go see a specialist for his lungs. I'm afraid that in five to 10 years that I'm gonna end up with cancer or somebody in the family's gonna end up with cancer. Yeah, I'm worried about later, whenever I grow up, I'm gonna just stay somewhere safe. We sat and worried in fear that we were gonna lose everything to fire. Now I kind of wish we would have. That's a pretty strong statement. You wish the house you've grown up in had burned down in yeah. a fire. It's not a home to us anymore. It's just a building that we're living in. Months after the disaster, a CDC survey found hundreds of residents still reporting symptoms consistent with the health effects of the substances released. Is there still a lot of heavily concentrated contamination here? In the Not ground? here. This is all, this area here north of the tracks has all been verified to be clean. Mark Durno is an emergency response supervisor with the EPA. The deep contamination was underneath the, the railroad tracks. There were areas where we had to go down 12, 13 feet. Durno and his team have been overseeing Norfolk Southern's cleanup operation and says air monitoring indicates there's no longer a danger to residents. We tested for hydrogen chloride and phosgene, some of the primary combustion products of vinyl chloride. So there were impacts, uh, but they were short-term impacts. If the levels of the chemicals are not high enough to be dangerous, according to, according to your research yeah. and according to data, then why are there so many people feeling these various symptoms? That's a hard question to answer. but. We also recognize that it's a question that needs to be addressed. Is it possible that we don't know enough yet about the potential effects of chemicals like vinyl chloride on human beings? That's part of what the research hopefully uh, can start to tease out. It defies logic. If you're going to burn five train cars of a known human carcinogen, with no pollution controls. Of course there are going to be toxic exposures. Judith Enk is a former regional EPA administrator who has criticized the decision to burn off the chemicals after the derailment. When I served at EPA, there was a vinyl chloride train derailment in Paulsboro, New Jersey. You suck the chemicals out of the derail train cars and you bring the chemicals to a commercial hazardous waste disposal facility. This was unprecedented. The EPA told us in a statement their personnel were present during ad hoc meetings leading up to the decision to vent and burn in East Palestine, but were not consulted about it, adding its role was to monitor the air. If you're in the room, speak up. What's the point of being in the room if you're not going to share your expertise? And the EPA did not speak up. No, <laughs> they, they stood by while this happened. Well, the good thing is, for soccer, you have a perfect day. When did you start to question those decisions? Honestly, from the very beginning. Misty Allison began to speak out against the claims of safety soon after the vent and burn. I'm here to put a face on this disaster. Or these are car decals, and then we have buttons. She also decided to challenge incumbent Trent Conaway for mayor. And this vent and burn is going on and it really looked like an atom bomb that was going off. We were absolutely floored when it was announced that the evacuation order was lifted and that people could come home. And as the news conference was ending, the train started running again, like clockwork. That really felt like 
Norfolk Southern was putting profits over people. Final yes was given by me based on the consensus of everybody in the unified command that there was no other option, no objections were given to that. At a hearing held by the National Transportation Safety Board in June, East Palestine Fire Chief Keith Drabick said the railroad gave him a very small window to make the final call. We were told we had 13 minutes to make the decision. Also, the company that produced the vinyl chloride, Oxyvinyls, testified that they had informed Norfolk Southern that the rail car of most concern was cooling down, reducing the risk of an explosion. The communication was we saw nothing that would cause us to believe that polymerization was occurring. There wasn't any type of temperature rise. Both Drabick and Mayor Conaway said they never got that update. Did Norfolk Southern tell you? We were not aware, but I know I, I would have still made this decision because nobody got killed, nobody got injured in this. It's possible that the vent and burn had let off hundreds of chemicals and compounds that could have carcinogenic effects in the long run. You still think it was the best decision? Yes. I mean, I know people are sick of hearing this, but I'm a part-time mayor. You know, we went through a lot and we were just trying to do what's best for our village, so. As part of its cleanup efforts, Norfolk Southern was responsible for conducting environmental testing. One of the contractors it hired was the Center for Toxicology and Environmental Health, or CTEH, a consulting firm steeped in controversy. It's like the fox guarding the hen house. I mean, when I heard that CTH was going to be involved, I thought, well, they're not going to find anything wrong. Why? And they're going to tell these residents everything's safe because that's what they do. Leslie Pacey is an environmental investigator for the Government Accountability Project, which is suing the EPA to get records on its response to the derailment. They tend to come up with the result that the polluter would like to see. The BP oil spill, Hurricane Katrina, they went in there. There was a coal ash spill in Tennessee. Multiple situations where they went in and didn't find anything wrong. That's a red flag. I challenge anyone to go back through history and look at any of these disasters that the EPA has responded to where the polluter is paying for contractors to come in and, and do sampling and cleanup where they've actually found a problem. And we're talking about one of the most blatant releases of a mixture of some of the most toxic chemicals that we've seen in America. And yet there's nothing to see here. It wasn't even tested until after I threw a fit about it getting tested. Then they came out. The contractors, the Norfolk Southern contractors. Yeah. yeah. And what did they find? Oh, nothing, they said. The air quality was fine. But we found out later from people from the EPA that the monitors that they had were not testing like they should have been testing. Here, try this way. Try putting it right here in the middle. CTEH also tested the home of Jamie Wallace. He put one line down. She and her daughter, Kyla, left East Palestine okay. and with the help of Norfolk Southern, rented a house in a nearby town. And they found? Oh, nothing. Because they weren't testing it the right levels and they weren't putting on the right attachments. What do you think about Norfolk Southern contractors being the ones to do a lot of the testing? I think it's a joke. How do you do that? You said last time we spoke that your daughter had had some upper respiratory problems. Mm -hmm. How is her health now? She has not had um, a lot of issues since we left the area. So I just pray to God that I got her out in time that she won't have long-term effects. CTEH says it tested more than 630 homes and businesses in East Palestine and that none of its data suggests risks to human health. The company also referred CBS reports to its website, which states, we pride ourselves on accurately representing the facts on any response or project in which CTEH is involved. Has EPA done its own testing or is it relying on the contractors? The primary uh, air monitoring was done by Norfolk Southern's contractor, but every home that was entered, there was also an EPA employee or contractor present to oversee that activity. We were doing uh, some work in the field. And we recognized that our air samples and our monitoring devices um, uh, weren't, weren't quite in sync. So uh, we evaluated those uh, uh, instruments and, and we, uh, we realized that. We put information out on our web. We talked about it at our, some of our community meetings. So did you go back to those homes that had been checked with those devices when they were not? No. By that time, uh, by, by that time we were months in, uh, oh, okay. away from this. Again, we've, you know, we've never seen you know, levels in the community that exceed our risk thresholds. And I know that the community doesn't buy it.
In a statement, the EPA added that it has collected tens of thousands of samples to verify that the data is reliable. EPA should have used their own contractors for testing, sampling, cleaning, and communication. Because think about it, if you have the polluter doing it, they have a built-in financial interest in not finding problems. So there's a conflict of interest. There's absolutely a conflict of interest. Norfolk Southern says it's committed more than $100 million to the East Palestine area, from cleaning up to donating to schools and businesses and temporarily relocating some residents. We are heading to an office for Norfolk Southern here at this rail yard in Atlanta. For months, we've been requesting an interview with CEO Alan Shaw, but we were told he's not available. Instead, we were given two company representatives to speak with. Oxyvinyls believed that the car holding the vinyl chloride, the car that was of most concern, was cooling. So why was a vent and burn still done? Why did Norfolk Southern still want to do that? I wasn't there to be a part of that decision, but I know that leading experts were there. Because a lot of people feel that their sicknesses have been caused by the vent and burn. We understand. We're committed to the citizens of East Palestine. We have invested a tremendous amount in their health, their safety, air monitoring. We're committed to being there for the long term. There are some residents who are concerned about long-term health monitoring and health care costs. If East Palestine becomes a cancer cluster, Will it still be there to help? From a long-term health standpoint, we are addressing that uh, with the with the state and uh, local authorities. So is it an option that's on the table? It is an option that is on the table. Some residents are also concerned that by Norfolk Southern hiring contractors and paying for them, that there is an inherent conflict of interest. We're about seeking solutions and any problems that residents have, we'll be happy to to uh, discuss it with them. Do you think more independent testers should be involved in the process? I I don't have an opinion on that. Because some of them have found other results that contradict what the Norfolk Southern contractors have found. Correct. The US EPA has done a very good job of handling that and helping us answer the questions that residents have following those independent tests. What do you say to those people who say that the rail industry has too much sway in Washington, D.C., and they point to, I think it's like $2 million in lobbying by Norfolk Southern in 2022. If there's legislation out there that ultimately enhances safety, as long as that is supportive of a healthy business environment, we support it. In a preliminary investigation, the NTSB said an overheated wheel bearing caused Norfolk Southern's train to go off the tracks. The agency also has five other open investigations into the company, including its safety culture. You asked at the NTSB hearing about inspection times per car. Inspection times for cars at a yard uh, have gone from about 3.5 minutes uh, down to 30 seconds per side of a car. To look at over 190 points on a rail car is not a lot of time. So Norfolk Southern had said something about, they said we don't have a set time limit for inspections. They said that at the hearing, and then I showed them documentation that shows otherwise. The evidence speaks for itself. Critics say shorter inspection times, less staff, and longer trains have become part of a general trend across the freight rail industry in recent years, boosting profits and sacrificing safety. How can we prevent what happened from East Palestine from happening in another community? Well, there are a lot of lessons learned, but right now, I think the biggest thing a a community deserves is knowing what's going through their community so that they can properly prepare in case an incident does occur. Another train coming. Yes, yes. Could these trains be carrying more vinyl chloride and other hazardous materials? Yes, the same substance that caused all the problems on February 3rd and beyond could be running through town right now. In November 2023, Conaway was re-elected mayor, defeating Misty Allison by a margin of under 200 votes. The town currently is divided, very much so, where there's a school of people that just want to move forward, and then there's also you know, individuals who are having health concerns and feel like that other group is really diminishing those concerns. Because I think both of those things can be true. 
I'm still going to continue to fight for East Palestine. I can't just sit and, you know, not be part of the solution. What's the solution? What needs to happen? We need to put health first, not commerce, not economics, and we need transparency. We need independent scientists. We need to be able to fund them so that they don't have outside interests uh, coming in, uh, undue influence of multi-billion dollar corporations. How concerned should we be that this kind of response might happen in other communities? Yeah, I, I would be very concerned. The EPA often defers to the states, so a lot depends on what state you're in, and that's a problem. And that's why EPA needs to take charge. This should matter to everyone because this will happen again. I feel like now I have a duty to warn other communities. And if this happens in another community, at least if my daughter has to watch me die of cancer when she's 10 or God forbid I have to watch her, at least it saves someone else.